Today, I'm flying KLM's brand new premium comfort, premium economy class on the Boeing 787-10 from Amsterdam to San Francisco. The key questions for me are, is it any good and should you spend your hard-earned cash on it? As a bonus, we've also got the KLM 737 in an economy comfort seat, not to be confused with premium comfort from Arlanda to Amsterdam. And I get a little obsessed with the Delft Blue Houses at the Crown Lounge like I always do. We've got unusual airline food, we've got beautiful views, we've got a lovely cabin that I have mixed feelings about. So let's get into it. All right, it's 10 to four in the morning. Oh! I haven't done an early departure for the airport like this in a while. And it's freezing here in Sweden. Headed to San Francisco where it's supposedly gonna be 31 degrees Celsius today, which is in the upper 80s. Quite a contrast, it's always quite a contrast. The lounge up here is always nice enough, and it's very quiet at this hour. I've taken this 6.30 KLM flight to Amsterdam what feels like so many times. It's definitely too early, especially in the winter. Even after you've taken off, it's still dark for a while, and the worst of it now it should be, should be just getting light if it's clear as we push back, hopefully. But today is a fun trip because I'm trying out KLM's Premium Economy, which is a relatively new product. They seem to have put on a lot of planes really quickly because they just announced it not so long ago and now it seems to be all over the place. But I haven't seen too many reports about it, so I'm curious to see what it's like. A little trepidatious about 10 hour flight to SFO, uh, sitting next to someone I don't know, you know, this sort of thing you get used to not doing when you have all direct dial access business class mostly in your life. What privilege, eh? Curious to see if it's gonna be that great KLM service and overall experience that I usually enjoy uh, in premium economy instead of business this time. Although, the one thing is, I will miss out on the Delft house. Which is sad, but uh, I was like scheming to thinking in my mind, is there a way that I can convince them to give me one or sell me one anyway? Let's see if there's any angles I can work, I doubt it though. Okay, let's get going to Amsterdam on this 737-900. There's not much to show from this flight in terms of service, but it was a very pretty takeoff at first light. Economy Comfort, which is just the extra legroom economy at the front of the cabin, is a great option on these short Euro flights. The extra legroom really just elevates the whole experience, and especially on a breakfast flight, you're not missing much not being in business in terms of meal service, etc. On these older 737s, the lighting isn't very nice and it all feels a bit old school, but it's okay. Service is a piece of banana bread and drinks of your choice. I'll take it. Note to SAS, free water should just be a given on flights. Nothing will make a person feel more cheaped out on than being told they have to pay for water, especially on a vehicle which is known to dehydrate you and in which you're captive. I have my little snack, get an extra coffee, do some work, and then in a flash, we're descending to Schiphol.
Okay, so when I posted this air-to-air -air shot on TikTok, I actually got the plane wrong. I was convinced it was one, but it's clearly another now that I look at it. Can you tell what it is? Let me know in the comments. Alright, made it to the very busy skip hole. This place seems to get busier every time I'm here. Although passport control wasn't too bad, I've seen that way worse. But there's just people everywhere. Plenty of traveling happening. Anyway, almost time to get on this 787-10. Looks like we have a brand new one today, delivered in June. And try out KLM's premium economy. Looking forward to it. 10 hours is a long flight. Hopefully it holds up over that time. So I'm gonna go find the lounge, the nice lounge with all the KLM Delft Blue Houses that I'm not going to get a new one of on this trip. At least I can look at them at the lounge. This lounge is pretty, though I often struggle to find a cozy spot to sit down for a while. Eventually I settle for this spot upstairs with a view. So funny thing about the KLM Lounge, they have this menu of food upstairs. It's the nicer place to sit with windows you can look out of. All the food on this menu costs extra, which is weird for a flagship business lounge. You can get some free pastries and a few drinks are free but everything else costs money. I think there's free food downstairs, but why segment it like that? And this is the much nicer space if you ask me. The downstairs is kind of dark, this is very light. It's a bit weird, not a great look. At many lounges these days, you can order all kinds of food for free and it's brought to you wherever you are. That's the sort of streamlined experience you want. Here they force you to think about the logistics of getting a bite to eat. And you certainly don't want to be offered to pay extra for some food. That's just irritating. So anyway, after trying to figure out which height of table I want to use, I enjoy these pastries and they're just fine. I should note that premium comfort does not come with lounge access. I have elite status that gets me in here. If I had an unlimited budget, I would seriously design my house to have a wall like this of the Delft Blue Houses. Probably much to the horror of everyone that lived with me. I'd still do it. Before I make any more rash interior design decisions, let's get on board. If I can get past this sea of passengers standing around in the cramped gate area. And here we are. The cabin looks great for starters. The space available is okay. To be honest, it feels a little bit cramped despite being clearly better than economy. On the other hand, there are some spots to stow things. There's USB-C, which is great. You get a little menu and amenity kit. We'll take a closer look at everything after takeoff though. So that we can arrive as close as possible to the uh, initial delayed time in San Francisco. So I hope to be there, let's say around the one to 1.15 uh, yeah, time. Devices may be used at all Please time. do not adjust your seat, but call a crew member. Without hesitation, unplug the device from charging and also alert a crew <laughs> member.
This aircraft is brand new, just a few months old, and the wing is so shiny it's like a mirror reflecting those clouds. I love that. Okay, so how is this premium comfort? Again, the cabin is lovely. The mood lighting is perfect. The seat colors just look gorgeous. I really like the overall feel in here. The seat reclines a good bit and it's comfy to rest in, at least at first. Over time, I found this started to feel less and less comfortable, but maybe that's just what you get when you're not in business class, eh? I don't know, let me know what you think. This footrest just did not want to go down. It took a while figuring and forcing to get it to work. I saw some signs of scuffs and wear and tear on the seats too, despite this being such a new aircraft. My sense is that although the seats look nice, they went a bit cheap with the construction, and as is often the case, that is making itself known with issues like the stuck footrests. The crew are really friendly today too, as they are every time I fly KLM. That consistency is one of the things that keeps me coming back. The tray table is sturdy, they hand out a little packaged towel, a big bottle of water, and you get a menu. You also get an amenity kit with these basic items. It's a nice gesture. Everything's held in a handy little bag that you could in theory use for other things later, so that's nice. The little water bottle storage spot is much appreciated. The bottle fits perfectly in here. And these headphones are noise canceling, but as with so many airline headphones, the quality is just average. I use my own Bose with a two-prong adapter that works on most airline seats. This blanket is nice, light, cool, and soft. And I'm doing no booze today, so I get this ginger ale, which is actually really tasty. And they hand out some packaged nuts as well. That works. I can live without a Delft Blue ramekin, although now that I said that, I kind of wish I had one. And in keeping with my health kick today, I order the vegetarian rendang with jackfruit filling. It's an Indonesian dish that also happens to sound the most interesting of everything on the menu. There's a little kick to it, and I'm very pleased with my choice. And then they hand out this Stroopwafel ice cream. Wow, I want to eat this every day. The screen is big and high res. The entertainment selection is good, though not the best. There are a number of choices, I just didn't find that many enticing things to watch. The touchscreen is also a little bit slow and laggy as you navigate it. I love the fabrics and color choices on these seats, as I've mentioned. Very attractive, and they're nice to the touch as well. The labs are good, bright and spacious enough, but you do have to share these with the whole economy cabin. It's only really awkward because that means if they're doing the service in economy and you want to go to the bathroom, you might be stuck waiting a while. And you can't really see that from your seat, you have to get up first and go behind the curtain to find out. Economy has more seats across, of course, 3x3x3 three by three by three instead of 232, but look at all the legroom in the economy comfort seats. If you could be guaranteed a seat next to you free, I think this would almost be equal in overall comfort to a premium economy seat. What do you say, am I crazy? That extra width up here is nice though. We catch some great views of the southern tip of Greenland on this, a relatively southerly routing across the Atlantic today. At some point, the mid-flight snack comes along, and it's a very tasty croquette in bread with a packet of mustard. Classically Dutch and delicious, though I could have had maybe three of these. Finally, here's the pre-arrival meal, which is a curious kind of Asian-style salad, vegetarian with watermelon in it and a bunch of pickled ginger. Kind of weird, but it works. I can't get enough of this moving map feature which seems to contain long and detailed information for some of the most random spots below us. This is a selection from rural Montana. I mean, it's nuts. Who input all this data?
and I won't say it flew by, but eventually we're descending into the Bay Area, which is always a welcome sight after 10 hours in the air. Four flight of Captain Stormish arrival and weather information for you. Uh, we'll be starting our set uh, shortly for uh, San Francisco. We'll be approaching uh, the Bay Area from the northeast on uh, Sausalito and then across the uh, Golden Gate, and then depending on traffic, uh, either via the Bay. So in the city on your right hand side or via the coastline in the city on your left hand side, so it depends on traffic. We'll be approaching the airport from the San Jose site. Expect to be landing in uh, just about 25 minutes from now, shortly before um, 10 past uh, 1. And as a dive taxi, we should be at the gate between a quarter past uh, and 20 past 1 uh, Pacific time. By the way, I've got a set of Singapore Airlines first class pajamas taking up space in my closet and I want to give them away. If you've made it to this point in the video and you want to enter to win them, just like this video and comment below. As long as you use the word pajamas, you'll be in the running. I'm left with mixed feelings about this product. When the seat in front reclines, there isn't a ton of space. The seat is wider than economy, but it's not that much wider. And you will have to disturb your neighbor to get up if you like a window seat. Although it all looks and feels great, after about five or six hours, it starts to be a lot less comfortable. If we're comparing this to other premium economy products, I'd say it's about typical in terms of space. But the discomfort snuck up on me faster here. I'm not sure if that's an issue with the padding or the ergonomics or what. As with any premium economy, it's not going to be easy to sleep because you can recline, but not really enough, you know? It's a tricky one, but I think I would only pay a small premium over economy to fly in this seat. I certainly wouldn't pay double the price. Well, that was a fun little trip on KLM. It's always nice to be on KLM. There's just something about the combination of the colors of their aircraft, the mood lighting on the plane, the look of the seats and the cabins, those dreamliners, the flight attendants, the good vibes on board, the smiles. I don't know, I just always have a good flight with KLM, especially long haul. It's always nice. Was that my best flight ever between Europe and San Francisco? Probably not. Of course I prefer to be in business class. It's funny how quickly you get spoiled and <laughs> thinking, you know, that something like premium economy actually feels a little cramped or, you know, it's annoying that you can't get out without disturbing your seat neighbor if you don't know the person. I think that product would be amazing if you're traveling with someone. Perfectly fine. Although, over 10 hours, it started to become pretty uncomfortable. I'd say by hour five or six, I was starting to feel it. I don't think they're the best quality seats. Nevertheless, because of those good KLM vibes and kind of overall aesthetics that I really enjoy, I had a nice time. And certainly it was better than being way down in the back. Anyway, now I'm super tired. It feels like summer in San Francisco, 31 degrees Celsius, high 80s Fahrenheit, and it's October. Uh, time to head in and live the California life for a few days. Thanks for coming along on this one in San Francisco. I'm Gabe Lee.